No, acaba de encender el carro. Es los. Okay, I thought it might be perhaps it's a little bit helpful to have a discussion if there's any possibility for from the uh, WPA group point of view to help uh, uh, the security team in, in what way ever. I just wanted to have some input from, from you and let's, let's just see if we can, if you have ideas as to uh, how we could help or... Uh. We can't. The infrastructure is restricted. Uh, Security information is restricted to a few people in Deviant, well, secret security information. You can't get access to it, and uh, last but not least, uh, the persons who are doing security now don't want help. So, we are fine. There's a list of 70 public um, security problems in stable. Well, the, 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 one idea is to, if, if you want to get some side, not to only to find the best situation is. We might want to start collecting some facts. For example, people who have actually worked together or tried to work together with a security team, what their experiences are, where it was possible to help or not to help them. So perhaps that would put us back on course. I think that we are unhappy, that's a shared fact. Uh, but yeah, we should perhaps share some more facts before we go to some analysis. In the most for example, France, that some work together with this uh, for, for one package job. Perhaps he wants his some input on that. Just an idea, if you want. Okay, sorry. Uh, I think we can give from the from the volatile point of view yeah, some some of some that. facts. We had uh, several problems with ClamaV in, in volatile, which has sec had security issues. From that, we had we learned very very fast that working together with with the security team is um, no big problem. They have. They, at, at least for us, they had a reaction time within 24 hours, um, and that, uh, that had happened twice. Um, we provided more or less the patches for them to integrate um, and test of all the stuff. And um, I think two or three days later, um, Joey Schultz released the security, the first clam of security uh, advisory. Yeah, I think it's clam it could help even something else because we as well as health team didn't only have to deal with the stable security team, but we also have to deal with the maintainer and the subsidy. And uh, frankly speaking, the most difficult part in all of three of the other teams had a contact was upstream um, because they basically don't agree that something like uh, CVE IDs are useful. Um, <laughs> um, yes. The second point was well, of course, now it's fixed. But when we first discussed about the climate upload to volatile, there were all, well, all interesting kind of ideas what can be included in the update. And I know for other packages, uh, well, maintainers are often not so easy to work with. Of course, one, one, one can teach maintainers how to do it better. So, for example, Sklama V, it right. now works better than. Maintainers or upstream? Maintainers. Is it, well, I, I, say, is, I would say, well, of course, we have only one package where can really uh, say it, but in that case, we were very, it was very, well, we were able to teach to maintainers. But I can imagine that there are maintainers that are as difficult to work with as Absom of Glamour And I know that there are Absom that are probably as easy to work with as a maintainer of Glamour mm -hmm. So, yeah, all it's both, but it's also, and I can imagine that the security team is even harder than for the volatile team to do such things. Because they have a lot of more packages, we are always speaking about one or two packages, so if we need to take some time to, 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 to teach them how to do it. Well, what could maybe be useful is to offer to Debian maintainers help in preparing a security update so that it will be acceptable to the security team in one go. You mean something like Debian security mentors? Yes, <laughs> uh, something, something like that. Um, because for a lot of maintainers, they will not have done security updates before uh, and they might just be wondering, okay, what is acceptable, what is not acceptable and if there are some people within the QA team who have some experience with that and they could like coach the, the maintainer and 
then you would have more, then you would take some work away from the security team. Of course, that would only work for public security advisories, not for. Uh, yeah, you know, sad because if, if you, for example, know there are five as persons who do that, and then perhaps uh, one of the good tech officers, I have some questions for uh, some non public thing. Uh, for example, I knew about the Scam security holes 48 hours before it was disclosed, but mm -hmm. that works. Yeah, but but it doesn't work at the start, it works later on in the yeah. process. Mm -hmm. One thing which, we, which one might be also interesting is that with the testing security team, um, we have at least a, a good overview on which CVE IDs are currently open and um, what needs to be tracked. Um, I, um, I've been, uh, I've done some work on, on uh, directly after that conf together with, with Johnny Nelson, Mika Anderson um, on, on te uh, testing security. It's fairly, uh, it's fairly easy. Um, you just go through the through the list of CVEs, CVE numbers and have a look if that pa uh, if that package which is mentioned there is in Debian and then try to track which versions uh, if, uh, are in Debian, which versions are affected um, and then have a look if even the, the stable um, pack, the package in stable is affected. Yeah, well, I hope that it's possible to make this life of all involved part and also the security team easier by more cooperation in the testing and stable security team. But that's something I think about shows me to discuss with themselves. I think this will need time. If this testing security team proves that they work on public security problems in, in testing and stable, then the stable security team will accept people from that. So I think it's a question of time because of testing security is two months old. It was announced yesterday or the day before yesterday. Yeah, the, the, security, the testing security team itself is a little bit older. I think uh, Joyce started that in the Ending of last year. So. Yeah, well, but uh, but but actually, what for what for security is or my school security team really what's really need is to be able to trust people because um, if you don't do it, it's much more work to the to the, to the review a patch. So if you know the patch is based, uh, it's a patch was already reviewed by a, by someone with some clue. So it's uh, and, and trust is something that really only comes with time. So I think you're you're very right with that. It's also a question of communication, like a person that, that publishes a security problem with the infrastructure, I mean a problem with the security infrastructure in a web blog is someone that, I don't know, I mean, it doesn't need to be kicked, but at least kicking in the ass, yes. Because well, there was... Joey's quite frustrated with the security situation. He's had some difficulties with FTP master and uh, the archive because uh, for some time, technical side of testing did, uh, of security didn't work, and he couldn't do what he wanted to do. And then he had uh, Linux type, which was more or less organized by him. And, and, was, was and he's it was quite frustrating. And he's uh, like one uh, of two people who are doing work for stable security at the moment. So, uh, but he has been offered help. But and he he well, yeah, it. but he can. I can, can, understand, can understand that he's not willing to just accept help from anyone. He's... Well, uh, but, 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 frankly speaking, as, but, I, I think you are right. It was not published in the web blog. I, I, I was very unhappy about that. Well, I, I definitely agree on that. Uh, but on the other hand side, but it's, a, it's a difference between what I say, uh, I like or it's, it's good or the right thing to do, and the other, I can I can understand that he's very well, well frustrated with some things. I can also understand that the FTP master very well frustrated with him. I can understand both sides very well, very well, um, but that doesn't help. Uh, but and, and I would ask to consider this block as a life of help for me. This is what it actually was. It a successful that, one, so to speak. Yeah. yeah. It, 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 it said, well, that was my personal diary. That is not some definite announcement. Of course, I know that. It's, that's not an easy way because if I do something, talk about something about the least uh, management, uh, even if it's a person that will make a mark of me, it will be held by uh, from us or to the least team. And the same if, if you uh, publish something about security, it will be a block entry about the security. Yeah, but but, the but I, mean, I, I still understand him, but yeah. But he's he's, 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 he's also pressed at DBN.org. 
he is one of our system administrators and he has so many jobs that every personal remark of him is taken as official Debian statement. And that's just not true. Anyone of the people here can just go somewhere and flame and yeah. say, okay, uh, this sucks, I hate it. The, the, the problem and is that he, he does the personal blocks, but he doesn't do the official statements yeah. from the security yeah. list. And, and that's what's missing. Uh, yeah. Because people that's running that problem. Problem want to know what the status of security support is. If it's missing for a while, that's not even a disaster. Uh, people running Debian uh, in a professional way will often have the capability of, for a short time, doing their own security support, yeah. if it's needed. But they would like an announcement, okay, we're having problems at the moment, uh, please track it yourself. Yeah. On the other hand, uh, on the other hand, a lot of enterprise customers will happily um, use an official announcement like we don't have security support for the time being uh, as an excuse to ditch them in favor of one of the major vendors. Okay. Yeah, but security, yeah, security doesn't help either. Like, no. If you're running Debian and then after two months you realize that you haven't had any upgrade for any of your systems, then I, I would definitely go for another yeah. system. Yeah, but, 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 and, and on the other hand, um, someone in the corporate environment said what he would like even more is that for all non valid holes, mm -hmm. that means for all non remote root holes more or less, yeah. that updates are only published once a month because it helps with some certain environments, which is just a contradiction to hey, if you don't have a security update for one week, would make problems. So I think the customer market is well, uh, well, well it's, it's, it's hard to, to say what will happen in different cases, have different answers. Mm -hmm. But I think. The Q support is something important for our users and also for ourselves. And I, actually, it's not that we say we need to sell Debian. Of course, we need to, but we should. I think the, 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 the important thing by that is, in my opinion, the better thing than, let's say, SUSE, for example, is because selling is not the highest priority in Debian. It's not the time to market, it's, it's a relevant thing, but we do, we do the right things. And I also want to do the lights and security. I think that's the thing we should focus on because that's one of our uh, major advantages. Yeah. Would, would we have an idea to ask Yoye to, to tell to, to everybody who he trusts and he, he, he would trust to be a, a security helper or, or a security person that is at least ready for some period, but then it would be the person that is side to side working with him? Well, well, but probably be possible, but I don't believe there are any persons who have enough time to help the security team at the moment mm -hmm. and to our trust. So my proposal would be to add another secretary to the security team. It's not the they active have, one. They have two secretaries. Yeah, but they are not really... They are working. They are working. But, 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 but actually... But actually... But actually... But actually... Is still working? Keep it? Yes. You can only send patches to the security team. Yeah, He's doing it again yeah. now. But uh, actually, I think that's something else. We have people in the, in the security team, the secretaries, who are able to do it, who are doing good work, and, but who can't publish and advise it directly. So I think the next step would also be to, to try to convince Joy to make some of them uh, full uh, security team members. But that's something that it's easy to discuss, to say here, we, we should do that and that, but it doesn't have to say it here without speaking with Joy. Once? No, I, I want to say, okay, well, we can talk about that endlessly, but we're go, <coughs> not going to say it. Won't it. Won't help. Yeah, that's what I just want to say. But, so, so what we should discuss here is how can we help on the outside? Uh, mm -hmm. And I think the, the basic thing there is to, to help maintainers and mm -hmm. not help the security team. Yeah, but it's, so, well, maintainers can't do the thing without the security team. Mm -hmm. but well, it's, then they can prepare. Yeah, but yes, the security team is still... And if we have security secretaries sending in patches that are not processed by the full they are members. But just, it might be faster if you don't need to send in patches, but just put a little uh, advice on this. Mm -hmm. So, maybe I think the idea with some um, security mentors is not a good idea. Um, the, the thing is, the reason why I entered that in, into the wiki was I was very much frustrated about the, the whole stuff with Mozilla and um, how that version numbering was going on and, and so on. Um, it, it took us how long? Th three weeks? Two weeks? Three two weeks? weeks. Yeah, two weeks. 
the, one of the other problems in, in that issue was that the security team was not really involved in the discussion. There was a huge flame on data security, but almost no input from... It was only Joey sending the first email. Yeah. And, uh, that's what, what I've seen from that. And then, and then never, the users. more or less, never answered to, well, to any of the mails. And that, that is bad. I think, I think we should try to... At least if he starts... Uh, such a discussion, you should also be involved in that. Uh, no, but, I don't but, but, but I think we are, we are going into the uh, wrong direction at the moment. We can't, we can't discuss how to uh, yeah. make, make Joey better. Um, we need four kids. How to change Joey's question? What about taking out or any other task that is not so important, like getting a good news? What about uh, Devin Wiggins? What about taking that task from him so he would have more time? Uh, well, he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to. That's all the discussions. But like with most important Deviant persons who want to be in control, we have a possible with <laughs> and all types and uh, some other so persons. So who should take it from him? For the month. For the month, yeah. He doesn't contribute regularly, so... Yeah, not anymore. Yeah. <laughs> that's enough, that's enough. Why would you show a hand it to Torima if he doesn't contribute now, so... Yeah, it doesn't maybe. make sense. That's, that's, I think that's a dead end. Uh, yeah, it's not what we are discussing here. But I don't think that... that but I think that's a, a thing... One can perhaps discuss with Joy and have this in four eyes, but it doesn't have to say, oh, what can we do with us? No, but I think at least this... Uh, having Mozilla, work, uh, I don't know the exact version numbers, but uh, let's say having Mozilla 104 in stable and uh, now uploading uh, 106 uh, to stable and saying uh, this is 106 but we version it uh, 104 uh, such one is in my opinion a very very uh, bad idea that's because it's that's <laughs> that's <laughs> like, like, just confusing <laughs> the users. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, there should be some, some guidelines. Um, we have guidelines for security support. Yeah, we should move Mozilla to next day of course of this. Yeah. Either that or just do <laughs> the to follow like of message oh. age, which was uploaded uh, with new major upstream version. Just because upstream maintainer was pain in the ass and didn't want to disclose what he fixed. What was about nothing but well, we don't know. So yeah, if you know, we should discuss that two weeks later. Yeah, but we can't know if a uh, new upstream version comes out and says uh, important security update. We didn't know in time. Yeah. So the solution is probably to accept that some upstream maintainers are not able or willing to provide patches and correct information about Wait, problems. Okay. And we need a security team who's able and willing to upload new upstream versions to stay This is popcorn material because um, who is going to decide which package is going to be allowed um, to have new upstream versions uh, the security put into the security the security and, and but the problem mean, is new upstream versions are going to break yeah. other packages and the, the, there's always a yeah. balance between do you want uh, a secure version or do you want to break the rest of well, the archive? Well, well, or, or are you going to update those packages as well at the same time? Mark, and, um, uh, Mark thanks. Um, um, just, I think we have three different options we are discussing about. The one is, we thought to be, well, well Upstream says we have a new Upstream version that fix some important security stuff. So we have basically three options. And one option still is, uh, yeah, yeah, nice to fix it, but we don't need the Upstream version with the back for it. The other one is that we say, oh yeah, that's important. We upload this new upstream version. This is the third one is that we upload this new upstream version, but Mark has claimed it as the last upstream version that we have in. And I think of the three possibilities. One is obviously, obviously the worst one. Uh, that is to just uh, mark it as, a, as, as, as an older version, which is actually the new one. And which other, other, I think we should, but that's actually what we did so. I think that is it's a major thing. Uh, where all the margin is very unhappy about. Uh, that's, 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 that's,
then I'd rather do this to not do it for us. But if, if you would play it as a new upstream version number, uh, then you would also um, uh, play it if you just keep the old uh, version number. You just well, it's, play. Not, it's, it's not about uh, just, just the version number, the demo impact is, is, well, it's, it's, it's just an internal thing. Yeah, no, no, it, no, it, no. It, it, it changed the source to say it's 104. Also, you said Yeah, sure. Ah. And so fuck up. Uh, that was done to not fuck up with all the yeah. different extensions we have in the archive because they check for the version number yeah. and they would all work. Yeah, but, but you could update the whole fucking Mozilla stuff. But, yeah, but we still have problems because some of the well, it's it's the beginning because the binary interface seems to have changed a bit. At least we had crashes and sag uh, faults and I don't know what. And uh, so you have to. You have to either remove Mozilla because we say we can't support it, or you have to upload a new version. Because okay. yeah. for jumping in, and how clearly was that fact documented that uh, Mozilla one offers as such one is actually one or six? In the oldest version number. So it's I didn't realize it. I there was <laughs> very <laughs> piece of trust. The change log entry said it's uh, it was uh, actually the advice screen? It was in the advisory. The advisory? Yes. Yeah. I don't know that. Sure. Yeah, I think it was in there. But, yeah. so but that's the most important place to document it. Yeah. But. And the advisory well, is a good change log. And the change log, of course. No, but Mozilla is a good example of the problem we have here. Um, Upstream is clearly not willing to disclose information about security problems. The security information is kept in Mozilla, but uh, access is restric restricted to a few persons who are uh, upstream. Essentially, and um, uh, it takes like two months or so until real information is disclosed. So we have either we have to wait for two months until we know what has been fixed, or we have to upload a new version, or just remove it because we can't support it. And a package like Mozilla is important enough to. Um, just override our rules and say let's upload a new version. Because I think it's probably I beg to differ here. Um, I'm absolutely not in favor of of allowing um, option developers to um, to force us to bend our policy. Um, I, I, I don't think that any package is that important and uh, frankly I find it a very bad stance of the of the Mozilla upstream to not support or not yeah. But do not support us in that way. So I I would vote for removing Mozilla because we cannot support it. What about the Linux kernel? Uh, just the Linux kernel. The Linux kernel has the same problem. Uh, the Linux kernel has the same problem. But, uh, but actually, actually, we have we have, we have, we have one problem. It's always it's for the developer. And we all are big developers in some way or other. It's always nice to work with shiny new features. That is something our kernel team, for example, is very good at. That's, yeah, that's just the case, but it's, it's not only, but it's of course the nicest, the nicest thing. But actually, the more important thing about being a good maintainer is to also keep all the stuff, to make sure that it doesn't break, or if it breaks, that you, that you fix it. And that's something that the Mozilla team just won't ignore. Yeah. So, yeah. The current absolute does the same, so. <laughs> but that doesn't mean I'm happy about it. But clearly, we cannot remove the demos kernel from that, yeah. I know we all to go to work. No. Yeah, the previous thing now. In Please. Six months. Please do it. For Edge. Uh, I just saw, you pointed out that uh, only upstream, uh, some upstream developers have access to those yes. bug information. So, you, in my eyes, the obvious uh, target should be that one of the Debian security team gets access to this. And it has it. We uh, yeah. Uh, Matt has access to the uh, what's up? Uh, Matt, he isn't active in the security team since months in or years. And he's yes. not. Okay, so he's not active in since the long security long. team so since he was to right out. That needs to be transferred to somebody else. Hmm? That needs to be transferred to somebody else. Yeah, yeah. but that's but it's a personal disclosure. It's not that he's done this information because members of the Debian security team, but it's a personal bouncing. He's well, he is person is not close enough. Not he's he hasn't gotten the success because he's part of the Debian security. 
but because some upstream developer said, okay, he needs success and he and not someone else will get it. And yeah. we probably, it would be nice if we could get someone in there, but it's a decision of the Mozilla team who are quite uh, angry about DBA at the moment. Well, Garten hat uns unsere Sache gezeigt. It's not so that barcode information is hidden, because uh, Mozilla has something called uh, called uh, running. And this one thing you can you can we can follow each check into the bug. So even if it's a bug and barcode, but you can see which code was changed from the bug, it's not non embargo information. And it's even possible if they would uh, still accept information to work with just uh, blank CBA information and the same stuff. So you can get the fix out of the of, uh, uh, out, uh, out of one side, but Mozilla, Mozilla absolutely indicates that they would be very unhappy if it would do so. And also if you want to check a whole Mozilla tree for the changes they made, you go and say, yeah. yeah, there are tons of changes and there are no more comments that... Uh, no, one side allows you to say, okay, I want to see all changes for that bug ID, and that works. Yeah, but uh, uh, upstream commits suck. They yeah. change stuff all over the place and there's one security patch in there and like 20 new features. I know. Um, and it's one commit with one bug number which is important for us and you have to sort out what's I, not important I, I know without knowing what the bug is. Yeah. So it's like... Uh, well, it, you have to I know, I know. But, yeah, and Absolute says it's very great for us. Yeah, so, nice. Very nice of you. Can we go away from it so that it's a fucking security hole? So we could yeah. use what? The father, you do the Anything else, anything is better. It's okay. Perhaps we can just go, go back to our initial question. I think Marcella is a really very bad example, but is, is there something else we can take up from this? Or where we say, well, where can we have the. Well, Marcella is definitely not a hard part, but perhaps there are a lot of easy security updates. Is there something we can have better? Yeah, uh, I want to put, put out something which was already mentioned somewhere. Um, the testing security team has to go through all security problems anyway and uh, a bit of load could take from stable security if uh, they would share a secretary who is doing checks and uh, checking what version of Debian is actually affected and uh, it could mean that, uh, secured, uh, that the security team for stable doesn't have to deal with uh, upstream problems like uh, we don't know what version is actually affected and stuff like that. This part could be done by the testing security team and be relayed over to the stable security team. It's probably not much work, which is safe there, but it's a few hours a week and could probably improve the situation. The problem is that you then need someone who is trusted enough to get has it. access to, because the has doesn't want access to this. this. Joey needs to delegate something then. Well, uh, then there's a trust. So again, you need someone who is trusted by Joey and Joey or who get access to that list. And even if he sees the security issues in some stable packages, you just can't go and test the security team of testing. Hey, there is something, please look at the package. Because the information can be can have an embargo for... No, yeah, for but, 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 but we can split public and non-public yeah. security problems. Yeah, and yeah. let non-public problems be uh, tracked by secure testing and not stable security. But look, I think about 90% of our security problems are public problems, about 10% are embargoed ones. And it's... Well, I, I don't know if, how much information has gone down, but... Uh, well, Troy says, uh, of course, he again in Oldenburg is deep in the scholar meeting, and Troy is there, and other Troy is of course also in Oldenburg, and the expectation is that there will be some discussion between them. So the there, is an, there is an official um, security meeting being planned in Oldenburg. Yeah. So, so alongside the, the Debian installer and the kernel stuff that's going on there. And, and of course, the expectation is from that meeting to that. The information sharing between the two teams will be improved. Yeah. I think that's an obvious goal for, for all of the yeah. part because we have all. Because so that's moment. so obvious. Yeah. So we can stop discussing here and wait for the Yes, so we probably need input because we can't do anything. Yeah. It's totally Yes, but, yeah. but if, if you have other ideas for how we can help, perhaps we have other good things. If there's something. Aside yeah. of the mental thing. Yeah. Well, we should just think up. Yeah. 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 One other part of, of the mental thing could be helping 
developers, backport uh, patches uh, if they don't know the language, for instance. Yeah, but yeah, they don't, they don't, they don't, they don't, they don't, don't know, know the language of the package they are maintaining. They should be kicked out of the project instantly. I mean, it's one of the key. It's a, one of the key qualities of Debian that the maintainer is able to fix its own pages. No, that's not true. That's not what was said yesterday, anyway. Uh, here as well, a lot of Debian. The, the, a key thing that is said within Debian about developers is you don't need to program to be able to program to maintain a package. It's Actually, useful if you can. But it's not a requirement. Actually, I, I some think, people say that, but I don't agree with it. Uh, uh, <laughs> that's a little bit different thing. No, a lot of costs <laughs> don't agree with it. But as you said, you need to be able to fix the problem. That means that you can need to understand the language, but that it needs how to make another people to fix the bug in this case. Okay, that's enough. But it yeah. means yeah. every so, maintainer should be able to fix serious bugs in his own packages and not rely on other people to do it. It's not acceptable. Not practical than I do other people. What, what happens if upstream just goes dead and we have, like, uh, yeah? You offer the package. You offer the package. So if, if, if the support you need for, for your work as a maintainer drops away, then you offer the package. Or well, request for help. Or request for help, yeah. Sorry, not just and please. the quality, the QA team could be a point to ask for that help. And Backporting security fixes is probably a bit harder than uh, uh, fixing other types of problems because you often have to know the intricacies of, of C, uh, casting, stuff like that. Where well, we have a lot of problems with scripting languages and it's not yeah. escaping. Impossible. So it, it really requires, often requires a higher level of knowledge to apply a security patch than uh, or, or judge if there are minor versions between two versions, if, if the patch can be applied safely or not. And I think the quality assurance team, where uh, a lot of knowledge is, is present in different languages with different people, could help by saying, okay, if you have a problem uh, there, what language is it? Uh, oh, he might be able to help you. And asking for help is actually much better than dropping the entire package on the, on the QA team's yeah. feed. Yeah. Sure, but I'm still not happy about maintainers who are not able to fix well, their own packages. Well, 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 I think that it's sometimes really well bad. It's not about not being able to fix, but for example, I have seen a, a package who converted between the version in the uh, suppose that is this one, and the version is now uh, the head of apps, uh, so apps is done, from single point, uh, from, from, from double point to triple point as C or something like that. Uh, Backport in such a patch um, is a major pain in the ass. So uh, I can understand that even someone who is experienced at coding C will fail at that level if, if, if he doesn't get any help at all. Or if Anshul says, oh, can you please someone that you my patch or whatever. And I know that, for example, for, I, I said, for example, uh, 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 Camion is definitely, uh, is my opinion, a, a good software engineer, but uh, he never approves his own packages for, for testing uh, when possible, but asks Waller to do instead because just that someone else uh, takes a look at it. Yeah. So I think it's a feature, not a bug. Yeah. yeah. Would it be also a good idea to to use the volatile? No. Yeah. Why? Question <laughs> 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 That's all the ask question. Volatile in security context is probably always a problem. But the default answer is no. But, <laughs> So so what is the question? Could, could you repeat the answer, the reasoning, because the yeah, question I, I, was... Yeah, well, I would like to hear the question first. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> the question, uh, it's I mean, if it's such a pain in the ass to get a new kernel with a break in the API, if it's such a pain in the ass to put Mozilla, a new uh, non-broken non Mozilla in, in stable with a break in the API, without breaking all the, all the uh, add-ons, plugins and everything, but okay. I mean, if we are not if we are not moving from a release uh, proposed, uh, from a release schema of, of releasing everything in a bunch and then putting it stable and then keeping it as stable for a very very long time and separating that into a core and then like satellite system that we can upgrade easily. Well, but then, then, okay. I'm, so I'm, I'm proposing like to have a, another infrastructure to allow people to get upgrades 
easily without having to break the system, but still everything compiles okay. and start. I'm asking. I'm not saying. I'm saying about. You mean having the way of the basic set of packages as well as the basic set of packages as well as the universe or whatever it is called, which isn't that supported. But I'm talking about in security context. Okay. So, so well, and I, I might get the long answer from the volatile uh, team's point of view um, on that because we have this, had this discussion well off. Uh, of course, on the, on, the, on the first look, it looks well promising to do it. Uh, I understand it. I was first, I was myself tempted to do it, but I had a lot of discussions with other people who knew about me off my not do it. Uh, the basic problem is that we have some, we discussed about it before, we have some serious problems with Mozilla. It's up, up to and so on. So, why should it matter if package is volatile? Volatile is not, is, not the, is not the answer for package is basically unmaintainable. If it's unmaintainable, it should be in, in, in volatile. And the other thing what you said, it might be a good idea to, 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 to break some package of the, of the full release cycle out and make them separate more fast releases. That's personally not a bad idea, but also the volatile is the right place, is the right place for that. Yeah. Right place for something like backport or, or something like you could, you could, for example, do Mozilla Debian Net and publish that into the new version. And if it's necessary to do an to security bug fix, it's only possible to the new upstream version, you just publish it there, for example. And uh, yeah. of course, I would, I would help you to set these things up in autopilot and so on, but that's not volatile. But then if, if you to say that Mozilla shouldn't be part of volatile based on that it's hard to maintain, that it sure as hell shouldn't be unstable. No, I have to ask, I have to my, 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 my reasoning is other part. I said, if you say it's too broken to not have it in, in, in unstable, then it's also too broken to have it in volatile. But, but, but I'm not to that, basically. So then we will have security upgrades on security team to have a, a, a different approach of, of a release. Like instead of a monolithic release to have a different approach on that. The, the, the problem is that you are not solving the security problem of our technology. No, but, but I think what Fessus is proposing is to reduce the number of um, uh, packages um, covered by the security drastically. So that we can only get the main archive as well. Let's say 2000 yes. packages. Um, maintained yep. also by the security team, yep. and the rest of the six or eight thousand packages yep. are unsupported by the security team. And uh, the yeah, that could work. But, uh, yeah, but, 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 but not too sure is that what really work because problems that doesn't work. The most problematic packages for us uh, are some packages which we can't put out. We can't say, well, we release Edge, but Mozilla is a part of Edge, but part of uh, bottom set open edge. That's, I think that is something our users would be very unhappy about. And then, uh, yeah. Well, um, so, um, okay. uh, the, the, uh, when you uh, mentioned the idea of creating something like Mozilla DBNet, yeah. yeah, that sounded like, uh, to me, like uh, in general, having two versions of say, Mozilla Firefox, uh, one which is kept being stable, but not supported from the security team, and one that may break, but is supported regarding security. But, but if, security. If, 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 if you put something stable, well, what the basic idea is, what the basic constraint is, if you release it stable, then it should be supported, it must be supported by security. It's not possible, we must not, at least not for the next release or whatever, not longer release a package with with, with stable. You can say you can make something like if you want uh, some dev uh, notice uh, to say if you want to have Mozilla, you need to add Mozilla Debian Net to your source list, for example. Mm -hmm. But then we can't put it uh, into Edge anymore if it's so broken. Yeah, but for so, example, how how can we learn from from that Mozilla disaster and uh, uh, if we're going to include Mozilla uh, in, into the next stable release? No, how, how do you explain that to the maintainers that you don't want to support the packages anymore? Debian is about supporting the Yeah, but, but then so the, the maintainers should also uh, think about how they should. Uh, uh, as far as the security support. The maintainer did what he could do to help with that breakage. Yeah, 
Yeah, but since it's not a silver package paint head, I certainly got off to the drive very hard to make the bottles as small as possible. Oh, but in this days, you will now go out and say we have about 1,000 or 2,000 packages where we support security for, and the rest of the packages shop with you yes. on Mozilla Debian.net or whatever Debian.net or somewhere else. How do you explain that to the maintainer? Well, we have, port, you we have porting, we have rules about porting. One, one of the, the rules we have is that if something goes into stable, it should be possible to do security support for it. And if, if a, a piece of software is not, if, if it's not possible for a certain piece of software to do it, then it doesn't meet the criteria for stable. I would also it's like... It's a release criteria. It, it's a release criteria. Yes, that's the CS bug, it's not possible to make it secure support. So why did Mozilla even release? Because, because, because this is a bug in time. <laughs> because this problem has been ignored for, for, for quite a while. And Still being ignored, in fact, because we uh, have uploaded a new oh, version sure. without doing the stuff we normally do with security mm -hmm. updates. Yeah, 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 exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Check if that package is in the future supported with the security. So we, we, did, we did it all. Just because the package is so fucking big like a Godzilla? Yeah. Or because it's small and written in a complex way or what? Do you know the judge did? So you think the package can be supported security no, wise? But, but no, but it's a very long discussion on how many is only. Do we have ten times this? Do we have other packages that are in the same state as Mozilla? Kernel. Kernel. We can't uh, follow the kernel out of them yet. So we have other applications. KD. So we shouldn't talk about Mozilla all the time. If we have a general problem here, we are uh, talking about QA, so we should talk about that. If it's just a Mozilla problem, we can just throw it into the FTP masters and let them remove them. We're not here for discussing about single packages. But it's a major problem in our security infrastructure. More and more packages are like Mozilla, very big. Very important. Scary support by upstream for older versions, like KDE, which is updated uh, constantly and KDE only KDE gets security updates for yeah. the latest, uh, the well, previous stable yeah. version. Not so, not in the form that we needed. Uh, the, I mean, the KDE people are are getting in uh, a very similar state to Mozilla and the kernel when a project reaches a certain state, a certain size, when they think, oh yeah, we are important. Uh, they tend to they 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 tend to put a break on their support for older versions and with um, I have been told four days after the release of KDE 3.4 when I reported a Zeg fault in a KDE 3.3 application to upgrade to KDE 3.4 right. and, and right. they flat out refuse in even pointing me towards the diff that fixed that particular bug. Three days after the release of KDE 3.4. Three days after the release of KDE 3.4. Yes, but yes. well, well, um, this would have happened with KDE 3.3 and stable as well. well as, as in, let me just have summarize why we have spoken on the kernel and on Mozilla. Um, well, there are, in fact, a lot of small packages. The upstream is also uh, ridiculous. But for small packages, that happens only in one of the package after that time the package is removed. We can't just say we remove the Linux kernel from that end. Yeah. So that's, that's the reason why we have only large, large packages that are so bad, because the small ones are removed. Yeah, but I, but I feel the first uh, security update of OpenOffice, if that will yeah. happen. Yeah, it was a large package. Yeah. This is like... <laughs> 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 no, but... Yeah, but so, yeah. so, so. Do that so, there are big packages that would need an aggressive security policy that for no. this package Actually, that we decide that a list of five packages these need aggressive security policies that we can't have uh, no we have a list of packages that needs an upstream that care about the package we yeah, can but if you don't have such a ship yes, you do. use this over whole complete packages list <laughs> it's not only about the size it's the whole complete packages list yeah there are bigger examples but it's also for the small ones well, I don't see a big difference in the exercise. 
Where's the smallest smallest packages? Uh, it's, it's, it's a package is full of leaves of the package you can as it's read. I just, well, if it's happening there once, packages are this gone. If it's, uh, if it's kernel, if it's Mozilla, if it's KDE, you can't say, oh yeah, Mozilla, KDE, actually yeah, so sucks, we move KDE. But when we change box, we don't change box. I would like to hear from people what they think about like setting a, I mean, the point of view of setting a set of packages that they have a stricter rules of security updates than the rest of the I very much like it in Debian. Everything I install is kind of supported. Whenever I get a, a BSD or with Ubuntu, the core is almost useless because I need so much stuff from universal ports or whatever they call it. And having no support at all for those things is really But it could be supported, but in a way that, that the security uh, restrictions for a new package on the, on the archive would be a bit relaxed. Like, for example, Mozilla would have been able to enter it with a new version instead of, like, that. Yeah, but the problem is that Mozilla is protected from Mozilla. You yeah. have to update all extensions with it. You have that to update And then the uh, extensions would be updated too. Yeah, but the extensions are yeah, also used by Conqueror. Conqueror. And DI includes KDE, so you break the installer name. <laughs> Must be that upstream provides um, diffs for the bugs. Bug no, no, we are not speaking about bugs at the moment. Bug, bug fixes, yeah. No, we are not speaking about bug fixes, but about dependencies which link together KDE and GNOME, and you have to install half GNOME if you want to have like, but, one package for that. My, my but you only. But what I would like to know do you know any. Any statement about how, how security will be handled by the DCC? Uh, I'm not part of any company of this <laughs> in any way related to the DCC, and I'm not on one of the DCC lists, so you have to ask someone else. Yeah. Um, and from the public statements, we can see um, for Edge it's planned to put a common core into the Debian, so like. Uh, 150 packages or so, which are enough to get the basic LSD uh, compliance. And after that, it will be handled by the security team, probably, because they are native Debian packages. And uh, for the rest, I have no idea. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Men hvad er det? Jeg synes, det er sådan, man siger, at man kan gøre en dependency nightmare bedre. Og hvad er det, at man kan gøre en dag? So I can now make the next talk about that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> first, <laughs> French guys. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.